Perfect. Thank you. All right, Kenny, you are definitely going to be my uh, <laughs> my assistants here. And let me, um, all right, let me see if I can share my screen as well. Let's see. All right. This should come up. Okay, uh, I'm so glad you could join us today. We have friends of Tom from Harvard and from many other places, including Elliott House, the Crimson, the Catholic Student Center, and many other walks of life. And Tom's family is also joining us today, including Mary Jane, Kenny, Palessa, Tom's brother, Chris, and Tom's mother. And many of you remember that it was Tom's mother who was the real brains and brawn behind the operation of getting Tom's missives from South Africa out to the rest of the world when there was no interweb. That was a long time ago for you, Palessa and Kenny. Um, and we're also gonna close today with a prayer from Nancy Murray. Um, I think we'll have a lot of people joining us today, so please mute your audio when not speaking, and we'll have time um, to get to everyone. Um, so Tom and I were roommates senior year in Elliott House. Shy, retiring, and reserved are just a few of the antonyms that come to mind when I think about Tom. He had the biggest smile, the loudest laugh. He was the best dancer and the biggest gossip. He lived an amazing life and his laugh was the best soundtrack ever. I was presenting a workshop to business school students last night on emotional intelligence and becoming a values-based leader. And the students were about the same age as you, Kenny. And I realized that Tom was a values-based leader. And he did that, you know, fighting for social justice and racial justice on three continents. And he lived those values at Harvard, whether writing at the Crimson, protesting apartheid, or participating in the Catholic Student Center, in South Africa, Stringing for Life magazine and writing about the struggle, co-founding the Trauma Center for Survivors of Violence and Torture, or starting a consultancy to mobilize nonprofits, and in the United Kingdom by raising funds for Save the Children in Oxfam. He was beloved by everyone who knew him. I have fond memories of visiting Tom and family in London and South Africa a couple of times, though Tom always reminded me that my visits to South Africa actually never counted because he wasn't there at the time, even though I stayed in his home and with his family. So our thoughts and prayers are with Mary Jane, Kenny, Palessa, Tom's mom, family, and all of his friends around the world. So hopefully what I'd like to do today is just have as many people share their memories of Tom. And of course, the more embarrassing, the better. Um, so just sort of type in the chat if um, you'd like to share anything and let's kind of go around. Let's just open the chat. Anyone want to share? Go ahead and just unmute yourself if you want to share. Hey, uh, this is Jennifer. I can't. Uh, Tom was one of my very best friends. I love him, and I'm grateful. That's all that. Okay. Rosalind? Okay. Thanks, Matt. I wanted to tell uh, just two short uh, anecdotes about Tom. So the first is in college, where we found ourselves at a bar in the summer that we were all spending in Cambridge and he was sharing a small apartment with Claudia O'Grady, also from Elliott House and a, a rugby team member. And just Tom being the biggest heart ever, invited everyone at the bar to their house the next night for seafood pasta salad, which was a disgusting recipe of, of boiled seafood, 
cooked pasta shells and Italian dressing all mixed up in a garbage bag, um, which was served from the garbage bag. So being college students, everyone brought beer, we ate seafood pasta salad, we didn't die from it, but um, it was just one of those memories of Tom just wanted everyone over and having a good time and, and we definitely did and shared many, many laughs together. Um, and just the, the second small anecdote is Tom was also someone who never left your life for very long. So it was incredible. Those letters were an absolute lifeline that we, you know, we mimeographed and shared among that whole group of friends. But even years later, we visit, had the chance to visit Tom in England and uh, in London in 2005. And then I was actually a dream come true, visited Tom in Johannesburg in probably 2008. Um, uh, and then most recently, I'm just really, really grateful that after many months of missing each other all over the continent, that Tom and I were able to have a, a dinner in Uganda last January, where we sat for four hours, the waiters left us alone. It was a beautiful evening sitting outside and just caught up on each other's lives. And I heard stories I'd never heard before. So I'll, I'll have to send you, we took a photo at the very end, even though we're very tired and Tom insisted on taking the photo twice. He chose it behind beautiful, you know, African trop tropical flowers, but he didn't like his belly. So we then had to take a close up of his face, but there, in both times, I think you just see the absolute joy of, of reconnecting after so much time. So he, he has been a part of my life for 35 years and I just can't imagine um, just not seeing his face going forward. Uh, Edmund, I think you have something irreverent, and the more irreverent, the better. Go ahead. Okay, so this is this is from one of the uh, Catholic Student Center retreats, and I don't remember what year it was or which one it was, but Tom was telling a story about a musician, a piano player, and the way that he described what this piano player did. He, you know, instead of saying um, pianist, he kind of blurred the, the syllables. And oh my gosh, I think for the next, I don't know, at least half hour, that whole day, he every once in a while, he would just say, penist. And that was enough to get, I don't know, like a good dozen of us just giggling at any random time, like we're middle school kids. And, um, and don't ask me why, but I mean, when I saw the email about, about Tom's passing, I mean, my first thought was sadness. And then right after that, in the back of my mind, I could hear Tom's voice, penis. <laughs> and I you know, couldn't help but giggle a little bit. I love it, that's great. Uh, Christina Blau. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you for so much for putting this together um, at relatively short notice. It was very kind of you um, to organize this outreach. So I knew Tom initially from the Crimson and I see several of my Crimson friends um, on the phone. Um, and I also, I wanna give a special thank you to Bruce um, who looked back in his photographic annals, which are amazing and was able to share some wonderful pictures that I sent to Matthew um, last night. So I think he'll probably share them in a little bit, but I, um, I really, um, I will say I, I feel lucky that I, I pretty much have been in touch with Tom all along, um, you know, with just a couple of sort of years here and there. Um, I had a couple of favorite memories um, of Tom and one was um, when I was a very young mother. So my oldest son is, is 20 um, and one night the doorbell rang at like 9 30 at night I was alone my husband was traveling and I opened the door and there was Tom like I, I had no idea he was even in the United States uh, and he used to come to um I um I, my husband and I uh bought the house where I grew up so this was a house that Tom knew I grew up in Boston and so he used to come and visit like he knew my parents and he said like I was in Boston 
Justin. I thought I would just show up. <laughs> like, so he came in, he had like presents for the baby. He was like, bring me into the baby's room. And I was like, please asleep. He's like, I don't care. Like, I want to see the baby. Um, and he had presents for me. He had presents for like, Peter who was traveling. And it was just like, like water from the moon. Like I opened the door, there was Tom. It was so fabulous. Um, we had such a wonderful visit and he was showing me presents that he had bought for his girls. He bought some jewelry for MJ. And he was like, I need to show you this. It's fabulous. I know you love jewelry. Um, it was just, it was so Tom. Um, and then when we had our 20th anniversary, you know, a 20th reunion at Harvard, just a couple of days with Tom is never enough. So at the end of that summer, I decided I would take a trip to, um, to London and I got to visit with Tom and MJ and the girls at their home. And um, our other friend and classmate, Evan Grossman was also living with his family in London at the time. And Tom and MJ just threw a like a total blowout, fabulous, like all day Sunday eating fest um, for me um, and for the Grossmans at their home. We had such a wonderful time. And as I, and Tom drove me around and he knew I was a huge fan of the Princess of Wales. He took me to the Princess of Wales um, a playground that had been named for her. And you, you really couldn't drive like into the part of Regent's Park where the playground was. And I was like, Tom, I don't think we can drive in here. And he's like, no, no, we're driving in here. I want you to see it. You're an important person. Um, and when I was leaving their house, he, he handed me this huge package. And I was like, well, what's this? And uh, he bought me a tea set. He's like, I know you like tea. Like um, he had bought me a tea set to, I had no idea how I was gonna get it back on the plane um, to Boston. Um, and it, it was such a lovely gesture and it was so him. And it was, it's kept in a part of my house where it's like behind glass. So, you know, whenever I would walk past that hallway I would look at the tea set and remember that wonderful afternoon with Tom and everyone. And um, he was, very much a larger than life figure. And one of the very few people I think that I've ever met that's truly a global person. I mean, he was sort of at home wherever he was, you know, whether it was in Ohio, in Cambridge, in England, in South Africa. And I, I just feel lucky to have been like a little coda in his life. So thank you. That's awesome. For the chance thank, to share. Thank you. Um, Sonia? <clears throat> yes, hi. I'm a friend of Tom's from Crims from the Crimson, the, the college newspaper. And I have to say, I, I feel robbed. <laughs> I really miss Tom. And um we knew each other as undergrads and we used to joke around. We were both raised Catholic. And I have to say, he was much better at holding on to his faith <laughs> because by college I had really fallen off that track. I didn't go to mass. We used to stay up and have, you know theological discussions and arguments and but always in a friendly way um also <laughs> i have to confess that i used to try and out you know up, uh, just you know outrage him a little bit with things that i would say and he would always laugh like i never got the outrage from him he was just always so understanding <laughs> he would laugh and he knew i was pulling his leg and that i was looking for a reaction but he was just such a steady and important kind friend and you know how crazy it was on the crimson we had you know, middle of the night, you know, we'd stay up and cast headlines or wait till press run or, you know, we were just exhausted all the time. And Tom was just such a, such a good friend through all that madness. And I'm really sad that I lost touch with him after graduation because it turns out that we actually sort of moved in the same circles. I went overseas for about 20 years and ended up uh, spending 15 of those years in Africa covering the continent for various news agencies and um, eventually moved back to Washington, D.C., where I work now at the Voice of America. And my job is to manage our, our Africa coverage. So I have a team of about 40 writers and editors and producers, and we produce news for and about Africa. And so I go back to the continent um, to meet with our partner radio stations and television stations on a fairly regular basis. And through the magic of Facebook and Friends of Friends, I found Tom again. And so we had more recently, you know, shared a lot of information and news and stories. He was one of the very few people, um, very few American friends of mine who really understood the continent and cared about it. There's very little coverage of Africa here in the United States, but he lived overseas. He was, as you said, um, I think it was Christina who said that he was a, a citizen of the world. And I so appreciated that. 
And we had some lovely online conversations and I was so looking forward to seeing him. The next time I went over, I was supposed to go to South Sudan and Kenya in, um, in April of last year uh, on a business trip. And then because of the coronavirus, it got canceled. So, you know, one of the things I was planning to do as soon as this uh, craziness is over and the vaccines have been distributed and we could travel again was to try and get to South Africa where we have a number of um, radio affiliate stations and make an excuse and take some extra time to go see Tom and to meet his family, who he was clearly so uh, close with and had such a wonderful and loving life with. And um, that's why I feel robbed. I, I'm just shocked, shocked by his death. We were messaging as recently as last weekend, and I was so sorry to hear of his father-in-law passing. And I, I'm just really sad that he's gone. I don't know what happened. I guess that doesn't really matter. I guess we just need to say goodbye to Tom and to tell his family how special he was and how many lives he touched. So I hope he rests in peace and I, I will always have good memories of him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kim? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I was part of the Catholic Student Center group and uh, I was uh, class of 86 and was very involved from the, from the minute I stepped on campus in the Catholic Student Center. But there is this moment in the evolution of the leadership team and the community at the Catholic Student Center that I sort of, where there was just growth, I, I sort of liken it to sort of leavening, like the yeast arrived in the bread. And I remember Tom very much as being in that, that period of history. And some other people on this call were too, like that moment when the Catholic Student Center just rose and grew, grew into a community that was impactful and beautiful and supportive and caring. And I just remember his, his levity and his just being in that moment of time when that community just became something brand new. And it doesn't escape me that the, the sort of irony and, and synchronicity really, that it was Tom about six months ago, you know, some of us have been in touch in the Catholic Student Center group off and on, and we had a meeting, the last meeting in person that we all sort of organized was a very long time ago. And Tom was like, hey, let's all get together on Zoom. <laughs> We're all stuck at home. And, um, and he organized uh, a call just, um, just about a, a month ago, less than a month ago, I think. Um, yeah, less than a month ago, a few weeks ago. And, and last summer, that reconnected many of the faces in the Catholic Student Center group. And um, that wouldn't have happened if Tom hadn't have been the leavening in the moment that said, hey, let's, you know, let's rise and reconnect. And uh, I, I appreciate that so much and feel, feel a, a grace from that. I guess I don't, I don't have a better word for it, but a true grace and being touched by that love and that life. Um, and I feel like the, the legacy of that reconnection is fresh and, and will endure. And I just, I feel much gratitude for that and to him for that and to everybody who's reconnected and through Tom in that way recently. Thank you, um, David. Hey, um, David Lamar here, um, one of Tom's freshman year roommates in Gray's, Gray's West. Um, I got quadded with my other two roommates, so, so I didn't see Tom very frequently after. But um, well, first, I want to just say condolences to Tom's family and other, other close friends and loved ones. Um, you know, I guess, um, and, and I appreciate what everybody's sharing. This is really a, a delight because uh, it's so odd. This past week, uh, and I have not been in touch with Tom, freely admit. It's just, you know, you go in different paths. I moved to San Francisco, and my life took me in a you know, San Francisco Bay Area direction. And I just, he's just fallen off the radar for me. But this past week, I was just thinking about the people in my life, especially my, you know, younger years when I was an arrogant, selfish boy, <laughs> um, who, you know, kind of modeled a different way of being. And I guess I'll just say that Tom, I mean, first, I just have to say, I can hear that laugh, like, you know, as if he's, he's present for me. I mean, it'll, it's one of those. And I think it, it, that laugh is present for me because his way of being was, I'd like to be more like Tom going after this call, frankly, like all in, totally authentic, 
just just Tom, like it's just all Tom all the time is sort of what someone was alluding. And I mean, I live with the guy, you know, you know, in a relative, we thought it was spacious, but you know, in cramped quarters for a year is a bunch of 18 year olds, right? So I mean, you know, we had all Tom and he had all my foibles and all my pluses as well, all the, all the time. So, um, so I have very, you know, so not only do I have, you know, some fun memories, et cetera, but I, you know, he's an important, you know, it was kind of memory and, and he was, he'd be a memory for me anyways. I haven't spoken to him in 30 plus years, but um, didn't cross paths at the reunions. I don't know why it just didn't happen that way. So um, anyway, I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful that he's been in my life and he, he's what, as I get, you know, I'm 55 ish. My parents, my late parents would say that their highest praise for someone was if someone was a good egg. Like that was like their their way of saying like that person's a good guy. Like it was kids we would say he's like, he's a good guy. Well, yeah, but more than that, like a solid like true blue like you know you you know you get you know you get what you see um, and and frankly a kind person to others. I mean he spent his whole life I think giving back to others and I'm a little bit ashamed. What I you know I try. In fact, if I have to jump early, it's because I have a little volunteering thing I do, but it, which is trivial compared to what Tom has done his whole life. So. I just want to say I'm really grateful that he had been in my life then, and, and I'm grateful for set, you setting this up. Sorry for the family, but it's a helpful reminder to me. Like I'd like to be a little more like Tom going forward. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, David. ZV, I think you've got a memory. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I just realized who that is. That's me, Heidi. <laughs> Um, just the last initials. Um, I'm going to echo a few things that other people have said, and actually um, a, a couple of themes that you mentioned, Matthew, that when I've been thinking about Tom, um, first is kind of as part of that group that Kim was talking about at the Catholic Student Center, a time where the experience of community was leavening inside us, I felt like in terms of our exploration of what it meant to live in the world and contribute to it. And one thing that stuck with me about Tom is one is that social justice piece, right? Those connections of conversation about what what can we do you know how do we can contribute and and the inspiration that we got from each other in that and how that's carried through our lives and no matter how we live that later but i remember very clearly that tom has that wonderful way of seeing that big picture the policy and the intellectual part but he also always would take the time to pay attention to you as an individual. So the last reunion I was at, um, Kelly can correct me, I think it was our 25th, you know, the middle age brain is not working, uh, but he, uh, I was in a kind of transition, confusion time about my work and my family life. And he took the time to not just think about some of the questions I was dealing with, but followed up afterwards with, suggestions of avenues I could explore, right? Like he would look at the big picture, but he'd really take that individual time for people. And that, that just meant a, a lot. So even though we haven't been in touch a lot, um, that those little moments of that were, were really wonderful. Um, and the other thing that I have to say, and those of you who know me know I love to dance. So many of my memories of Tom are about dancing. And I, I had said this in, in a group email that went at that reunion, um, we danced together. Kelly and a few others. And it wasn't sedate middle-aged dancing, right? Tom was getting down on the floor and just his love for life was so exuberant and so evident. And so it's just like, it. now I'm gonna cry because it's that joy, right? That presence. Um, I miss these last couple of reunions because of my lack of being on Facebook and other things. But I emailed with him after this last one when I realized I'd missed it and he sent me an email and he said, we'll have another and you'll be able to join the wild rumpus. And I thought of that term of his, right? And that's like, I like to think of him, whatever this next phase is like, that he is part of that wild rumpus. And that's what he inspires in me, right? As we kind of think about how we live forward, not just his convictions, but his sense of living with joy. So thank you for this opportunity. And my, my heart goes out to his family. Thank you. Scott? Hi, uh, my name is Scott Lyles. I, uh, I don't know many of you, uh, and I would extend firstly my deepest condolences and peace uh, to Tom's family. Um, as you've heard today, and you already know, just a wonderful human being. 
Um, one of the reasons that many of you uh, don't know me is I represent that interstitial time in Tom's life um, when uh, he was early uh, on the scene in South Africa. Uh, he and a bunch of us knew each other at University of Cape Town in the early 90s. Um, and Tom, very much like uh, what everyone else has shared with uh, from other parts of his life, was our spiritual, moral, and political leader uh, to a bunch of um, to a bunch of uh, students, uh, mostly graduate students, um, and mostly from the United States, uh, who were who were at UCT at the time. Um, a funny story, if you uh, think about the or recall the pictures that um, Matthew was sharing. The, the folks all dressed in red were the, uh, were the UCT softball team that Tom was the president of, the leader of, and indeed we needed a uniform the day before our, our first meeting. And uh, I don't know if you recognize the, the shirts, but they're all protest shirts uh, that had been from a rally that had been on the, on the uh, Grand Parade in Cape Town from the day before, and Tom had them in his room, of course. And so that's what we all bedecked ourselves in. And that became our official uh, uniform of the UCT uh, American softball team. So, you know, all of the wonderful things that Tom did before he first came to South Africa and all of the wonderful things after, including, you know, his engagement with the ANC, uh, with his partner and family, uh, both in South Africa and then uh, later in England has been consistent. And you know, that is one of the greatest things uh, about Tom. Um, to the family, I would love to share with you, moto que moto que bato. Um, a person is a person because of other people. And we are all better people because of Tom. And you, know, you certainly are as well. You should be very proud of your father, son, uncle, cousin, partner, father. Um, so thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to uh, share his life uh, with us. And uh, thank you, Matthew, for putting everything together today. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Nancy, I think you've got a silly story to share, and the sillier the better. All right. So the, I can't really talk too much about Tom because it makes me totally lose my mind because I'm so sad. But um, the last time I saw Tom was we decided to host a um, Harvard Yale tailgate virtually this November because there was no Harvard Yale game. And I put it in my personal room instead of having a different room. And um, I also teach a daily meditation class in that same room. And so we had the whole Harvard tailgate with everybody together and everybody left and then I was teaching my meditation class <laughs> and then everybody's quiet their eyes are closed I'm doing whatever and then all of a sudden Tom's face shows up he's like I'm here <laughs> and he's got like his Harvard cup and he's like I'm ready <laughs> I'm like ah <laughs> I'm like trying to hit you and I'm like wow I'm meditation <laughs> it was so funny and it was just it was awesome for us and Pam's here like because she was in the meditation because I emailed him I'm like Tom just come back in 15 minutes and so then I just feel so lucky that after meditation he came back and then Hugh and Pam and Tom and I got to spend this like precious time talking to each other but it was just so funny and just I think a little glimpse of like who he was and the last time I saw him and I'm sorry I never met his family and I'm very sorry and I, I um, just love him so much so Thank you. Um, Colleen, I think you've got a memory or two to share. I do indeed. Yeah, I'm, my condolences to Tom's family. Um, I have several memories. I, I like like Sonia, I, I did lose touch uh, after um, graduation, but but at Elliott House where um, I got to know Tom, I have to admit I was someone who didn't really feel like she quite belonged at Harvard and walking into that and didn't belong, didn't feel all that welcomed, I have to admit, in Elliott House. Um, but Karen, Nancy, Tom were amongst the group of people where I could walk into the dining hall and I would look for these people and you would know that you would be welcomed with open arms and accepted for who you were and appreciated and loved. And that, that definitely was Tom. Um, when we 
both went overseas after graduation. We kept in touch via letters and I have to admit what he taught me a lot about the situation in, in South Africa and what Im impressed me the most was his, he, he wrote about how um, students didn't have access to higher education because of the lack of prerequisites of certain certain courses and and I was stunned to learn that even after okay apartheid is was over um that there were still so many roadblocks set up for um for many South Africans and he wrote about how I think it was Greek he taught was it not Greek lessons that he that he taught to um, many students well that because this was a prerequisite that they didn't have had no access to it um, during their secondary school education and he was just trying to help um, you know, op open up doors for people. Um, and the next time uh, I bumped into him was at the 25th reunion. And I have to admit, I sat down right next to him, just sort of out of the corner of my eye, out of my, the corner of my eye, a gentleman next to me and, and, and then he said, Colleen? Yeah. And I looked and, he, and I sort of had a questioning look in my face as he has Tom. And it's like, yeah, we changed a little bit. Uh, yeah, after 25 years, one changes a little bit. And but from the several pictures that I sent, you know, he was just part of the group. The he was he was the same. The smile, the laugh, um, always making you feel welcome. And then, uh, then of course we reconnected on Facebook a little bit. And um, I see the family now has a new family member, a little dog, um, and. That's going to be, that's going to help a little bit. Yeah, this little, little being will share its love with you. And uh, I don't know the story behind how, you know, what went into getting the dog, but um, I, with my own experience now, having a dog in these challenging times um, is a godsend. So if that's a small, yeah, something that helps a little bit, look at that little doggy and, uh, I guess that's something that you shared for a very brief time with your husband and with your father and just my condolences. He was a great guy. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Um, Joel? Thank you, Matthew. Thanks for arranging this. And I think be remiss to not immediately uh, give condolences to uh, Mrs. Winslow and, and Tom's brother and to MJ, Palessa and Kenny. Um, I called after uh, hearing about, about the devastating news um, uh, of Tom's death. I, I called a friend who none of you know, and I, I thanked him. And it was, it was weird when I thought I thanked him for, for not getting married. But a friend of mine had a wedding in South Africa three years ago. The wedding was called off but I decided to go anyway. Uh, and what a blessing that turned out to be for me. I went because I thought I've never been there before. Tom Winslow has been inviting me for 30 plus years to come to South Africa. I'll get to see him, see his family. I'll go on a safari, I'll do those. And I ended up spending the most incredible day with Tom. And I now just realize how, how grateful I am oddly to a friend for breaking off his engagement and giving me the free time to spend with Tom. Um, so sort of odd, but, but uh, uh, great. And Tom was, was an incredible host. He offered to pick me up at the airport. He offered to take me to the airport. He took me around. I'd seen a pair of shoes when I was on the safari and we went on a search to try to buy the same shoes. And he took me around and showed me various sites and then had a dinner party at, a, at his house. And um, I always learned a lot, Tom. One of the things Tom, I think was, was a hallmark. He was on the crimson with so many of us on this call. And part of being on a newspaper is, is educating people about what's happening in a community. And then Tom did that through those letters, all those long early letters that Mrs. Winslow circulated to all of us college friends in those days. I, I will admit to maybe not reading every word of them because they were they were long and voluminous and voluminous and the postage you must have spent Mrs. Winslow on circulating those tomes to us. But I do still have them somewhere probably in, in boxes. Um, and we'll go back and, and reread them. Um, 
the the other thing you know Tom and I shared an, an affinity for gossip. We I think both of us were were happy and proud to 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 do that. But the other was was how you you know in terms of you know Tom always educating so much about South Africa and what had happened in those early letters and then on my my trip there. But I also learned some new things about about Tom um, on, on that trip. And one was I knew he always saw, you know, the beauty in people and in the friendships he, he built together. But also I didn't know until that visit about um, his collecting and his putting together beautiful collections and his, his, you know, he was very much a guy in the here and now with people living life to the, to the best of, um, of his ability. But he also had this great appreciation for history and the past and books and and artifacts and collections and he he had put together at least in the home in South Africa in Cape Town um, you know an incredible collection of, of things and and I think one of the other things that was clear from from talking to him was how when people would come of certain things he, he collected for everybody else too he was he would see something he'd say I know that person would like that that piece of pottery or that interesting thing or that ties into their interests and so as he told stories about some of the things that he'd gotten that were there to still give to other people or to share that just sort of showed his spirit so I think you know I can speak for everyone on this and saying that we're all brokenhearted um, by this and our hearts go out to uh, his family and friends and and um, Tom's memory will be a blessing for all of us forever for the rest of our lives. And Tom often said when visiting New York, he would have to see Joel because it's a custom in Africa that whenever you go to any village, you have to see the chief. <laughs> and I think um, Kaz wanted to add something as well. Go ahead, Kazma. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, Kazma Storniolo and my wife, Meredith. Um, we were um, Elliot House and uh, Catholic students that are friends. And, um, uh, my condolences to the Winslow family. And um, I remember visiting and how gracious uh, once when I came through Cleveland, uh, how gracious you were as host. So uh, uh, really my condolences. Mary Jane, I can hardly keep it together, but it's so lovely to see you mm -hmm. and, um, and the girls. And we really cherish the few memories we had when our girls were younger and we saw each other in, in Africa and in London and, uh, um, it's just, it's such a dear loss, but um, uh, I'll really miss them and uh, our, our, our hearts go out to you. Thank you. Um, Marissa? Thank you. And this is just a small note. Um, so many of you have spoken so beautifully about Tom. I knew him also from the Catholic Student Center. Um, and, you know, I, I knew him as the wild rumpus Tom, um, the social justice Tom you know, the worldly Tom. Um, but one year we did Secret Santas at Christmas and um, I, I, I started getting, I, I didn't know I was an English major yet. Um, it has started getting poems by John Donne, Holy Sonnets um, under my door. And I couldn't guess who was leaving them. And then finally, you know, a box of tea and a Harvard mug and a note from Tom and I still have the mug and I just was so touched because I just didn't realize, how, how, you know, how he understood that I would love that and treasure that, right? Um, and I didn't realize that in addition to all his sort of emotional bounty um, and intellectual amazingness, like was this poetry and this gentlemanliness, you know? And I just, um, he's in my prayers. Your family, Tom, you're all in my prayers. Thank you. Um, Kelly? So I'm uh, Kelly Sweeney McShane from Harvard and Catholic Student Center Days. Um, and I first just want to extend uh, deep condolences to MJ and Kenny and Palessa. My daughter Molly had such a lovely time um, with you for several months when she was on our gap uh, semester and then uh, spent time with Tom in Oxford as well. So deep, deep condolences to you from, from all of us. Um, I did last night go through a bunch of photos. It was really fun um, to look at the good days and the fun days and to remember the times we had together. 
Um, I actually found one of those letters that I will send from Mrs. Winslow. I think you sent it to my dad in Texas and then my dad sent it to me and he saved them all. And um, so uh, it is very long, um, but I think it was just a treasure to find that. One memory I want to share, he actually came to visit me when I was in the Peace Corps in Sierra Leone. Um, and he'd been in South Africa, I think for a while and was on a trip back and forth. So I had the motorcycle and you know how his laugh, but it was definitely sort of a high pitched, oh God, I'm getting on the back of the, the, back of the motorcycle with Kelly, how is this gonna go? Um, and I had a pit latrine and he did not wanna use that pit latrine. He was like, there's gotta be a toilet somewhere in this village. And I said, well, the nuns have one and we could go in certain hours. Do you really know? I'm not sure if this is gonna work out. Um, and we had such a great experience together, although we definitely reflected on how we were living in very different parts of Africa at that time. Um, but just that he came all the way uh, to see me and visit me. Um, and I think just, uh, well, it's been so nice to reconnect um, and that he really did bring us together and that we were able to see each other just recently. The very end of the letter I have said, I've been in Johannesburg for seven weeks, only a hundred more weeks to go. <laughs> and he has obviously stayed and found his heart um, and he will be, be deeply, deeply missed. Thank you. Anyone else want to add anything? Victoria, go ahead. Hi. So I, like everyone else, I really want to add my, you know, my send my love and condolences to Tom's family. Um, it's, I, I, you know, I, I, I never got to meet many of you over the course of, of my time knowing Tom and it's a, it's a great regret to me. Um, for those of us on the call who were on the Crimson, I think we probably all candidly admit that that the, that, that institution was not exactly a, a bastion of sweetness or kindness. Uh, it was a it was a pretty tough place, I mean, with its merits. <laughs> um, but but Tom was this warm center of of generous goodness and humanity in that very tough place. He he had this unique combination of that. Kind of real sweetness, and that he managed to bring it and maintain it in such a, a competitive venue, um, and and was was an extraordinary accomplishment. Like like a lot of us, I um, and I, I relied on that when I was there. I mean, it was it was it was something that made the crimson possible for me. Although I, I maybe never really fully realized it as much as I do now, looking back on it. Like a lot of us, I, I lost touch with him. He, I, you know, I intermittently saw him or, or heard from him, but you know, not in that sort of way that I've managed to keep touch with a lot of other people who were in the United States. And then at our last reunion, I saw Tom, and it was like a, it was like a bolt of lightning um, going through through my heart. Um, and I spent. I remember all I wanted to do in the reunion was to be near him um, because of, you know, I just, I kept looking for him around the rooms and just trying to figure out a way I could go be closer to him and talk to him and catch up with him uh, because that, that same core generosity, sweetness, kindness, intelligence, brightness, um, insight was, was still there and unique amongst amongst all of the people I've known. It was a real honor. Thank you. Um, anyone else want to add anything? And family as well. I don't want to put anyone on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Matthew's sister um, for people who don't know who I am, but apparently if you are a roommate of Matthew's, you automatically know who I am. So to to everybody um, family obviously but friends too one uh, when I was a sophomore it was our spring dance spring fling and I don't run out anyone oh my god I'm going to your dance I don't care if you want to go we are going to your dance so it was this Hawaiian spring theme and Tom shows up in a cummerbund that is just out of this world laughed so hard. I have never had so much fun dancing with somebody. And so whenever it came up, it 
music of David Bowie and the song was Dance. So that's how that's how I remember him. And two years later, I got to see him in London when I moved there. And I was moving into a new flat, new apartment. And uh, what I've learned is that something was Tom that I was so touched. He gave me um, two porcelain saucers and cups and was to have fish tea. my two memories of trauma, which they're in time for. That was amazing. Thank you. He was a great dancer and a great dresser as well. Um, Kristen, did you want to add something? Yeah. Um, thank you again, Matthew, for setting this up. It was really important for so many of us to be able to connect, um, especially in these COVID times. And to Tom's beautiful family, families, um, my deepest condolences. Uh, when I got this news, uh, I was in the middle of a meeting, and I, I just don't even remember the rest of the meeting. It just shook me and gutted me in my, the words of my crimson clan roommate, uh, Becky. Um, I was on the crimson with Tom and um, I'm not exactly sure why this happened, but we ended up um, working together very closely. We, we both picked the Sunday slots to put the paper together. So we were often kind of co-editors of what would be the Monday paper. And um, so what is Sunday? Sunday is football day. And um, one thing I think hasn't been mentioned is that Tom loved Cleveland. And I'm from Denver. So the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos often faced off on those Sundays. And it's a wonder that we got any work done, but I think bets were had and, and no doubt um, it, it won and lost and work traded over you know, football scores. I don't even know how we watched it in those days. There was no internet, but uh, um, you know, like many others have said, he was just um, this joyful presence. And, you know, I, um, and as Victoria said so well, the Crimson was a tough place. I mean, it was the most meaningful experience. And I think our bonds are very deep um, because it wasn't so, in so many ways, a difficult place um, to be. Um, but Tom, Tom was another person who just felt like, uh, you know, like I did that, you know, I, I'd come from, I guess, what we now call the flyover states. And I was, you know, what business did I have at Harvard, the Harvard Crimson? And, you know, Tom was just kind of my fellow traveler. Um, and those days, there was a lot of, um, you know, protest as there, you know, often is on college campuses. And the main issue, I think, in our time was um, apartheid, anti-apartheid protest and, um, you know, complete respect to folks who um, undertook those activities on college campuses. Um, but, you know, it's one thing to protest when you're a college student. It's another thing to do the work. And I think of Tom as somebody who did the work, who um, lived his faith more than, you know, almost anybody I can think of. Um, and I know plenty of people of faith, but he lived his faith in every moment, in every activity, he devoted his life to justice. And, um, and uh, you know, a friend of mine was, you know, I was just sort of shaken. And I, I just said, he was one of the best people I knew. And, um, you know, this has just been a really devastating loss for, for so many of the people he touched over the years and particularly for his family and um, just sending love to you in, in Cleveland and in South Africa. Thank you. Anyone else wanna say a word? I, yeah, please, Bruce. Bruce, um, echoing, I, I knew Tom mostly because of the Crimson a little bit because of the Cleveland connections. I roomed with two other guys from Cleveland, uh, Ted Sturman and Brian Offit. Um, and I wish I just had more concrete memories of Tom. Uh, one referred to him driving earlier, and I swear we left Providence's Final Four one time, the uh, hockey tournament, and he jumped, he hit a curb, but he didn't remember it the last time I talked to him about it. So I'm not positive that he did it, but he just was like giddy, you know, that laugh, that laugh, you know. Um, but I wanted to echo, to, uh, well, I wanted to echo what, some of the other Crimson people have said. And one of the things I wanted to say about it was that most people there wanted to be right. And when I mean that, I mean, they wanted to win the argument that they were in. Tom was almost always right, but not in that sense, but to the, like the moral high ground. He, he cared less about his own vanity and more about hum humanity. Um, and it, it was just 
that was just his way. Uh, and so, it, and looking back through photos from uh, trying to find stuff, um, some of the photos that you posted, uh, the black and white ones or ones that I shot back in our crimson days. And there's one of him just beaming with a smile. And I, and I just have to say that's Tom to me. I mean, he just, that, that smile. Um, I mean, he just always had it, it seemed like. Um, I, I, I just can't remember him not smiling. And, and, you know, it was varying degrees of smiling, but uh, the beaming one was, was frequent and just so, uh, well, like, like Victoria said, a great source of warmth inside a building that had uh, sometimes some ice. So uh, I just want to say he was a great man and, you know, always had been. And, 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 and even like I lost touch with him, but he reached out to me recently, you know, a couple of years ago. And so we were able to catch up a little bit. And it was just so, you know, it was just so Tom, you know. Um, so I just want to share that with, you know, with, with y'all. And uh, he is, he's, I miss him. I miss him. Thanks. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Matthew, I was just going to say that listening to what everyone has said about Tom, and I've been thinking a lot about Tom in the last couple of days, that I think he had the rare quality of making you feel better about yourself. I mean, um, that he was the kind of person that made you feel like your best self or like um, you are somehow um, rising to your own occasion um, being around him. I was telling Matthew this last night that when he had been in South Africa for not very long, um, this was obviously after we'd graduated from college, it somehow occurred to me that a good thing, a good idea would be to send Tom um, like three or four dozen homemade chocolate chip cookies in South Africa. Um, I, I don't know why this seemed like a good idea, but I was like a cookie baker and I was like on a kick of, I guess uh, many of you from the Crimson have had my cookies. Um, so I baked him these cookies um, and I sent them and like I, I remember wrapping them in like individual pieces of tin foil or something. And I had to of course go to the post office in my um, neighborhood in Beacon Hill and like declare them on customs and everything. And the postmaster was clearly thinking I was out of my mind. And then I got this wonderful letter from him a couple of weeks later, um, thanking me for the cookies. And, and he turned the cookies into so much more than what they were, which was, I just thought of sending some cookies to my friend. And he said he had shared the cookies with some young people that he had been work, working with um, who had been in the, the early work that Tom had done was um, working with people who were sort of, who had suffered trauma or um, uh, had been the victims of some injustice. And he said that he was explaining to them like that the chocolate chip cookie was sort of like the seminal American cookie. And that he felt like um, when he was sharing these cookies with these young kids, that he said that it was like, it was like sharing like little pieces of America with them. And that it was so exciting for them to have these cookies. I can remember like I was reading this letter and I was like weeping by the end of it thinking like, oh my gosh, like I really feel like I've done something when really I, I did very little, but I think that um, I was thinking about that a lot this week and thinking that very few people or relatively few people have the generosity of spirit to always be thinking, what could I say to make that other person feel like a better version of them? So I think that is, that's the memory that I'll always keep with me of Tom. And I, I've heard so much of that from so many people today. That's great. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, so I thought what we would do is um, Nancy was going to um, say a prayer in honor of Tom. And I can put up some of the photos as well. Before we do that, do you mind if I just thank everyone? Um, especially you, Matthew. Hi, everyone. I'm Kenny. I'm Tom's eldest. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of you <laughs> over the years. and. A couple more of you as my work has kind of begun to blend a little bit more into some of the things that he did. Um, and it's very cool to have met um, some of the people who shaped 
who he became to me and obviously to so many of you. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you, especially Matthew, for taking the time to put this together. And um, for the rest of you that I've had the pleasure of meeting for sharing your stories and your expertise with me um, on my journey too. So I appreciate it and love to you all. Thank you um, and love to you. And you know, one of the, um, Kenny, one of the sweetest stories your dad was saying, we were on a, a Zoom call this summer in June. And, you know, when, when your dad was, you know, your age, he was, he was protesting, you know, against apartheid in South Africa. And, you know, he would protest for any, any good cause. And he was just talking about how conflicted he was because, you know, you would wanted to protest racial injustice in the US, but he was really concerned, especially during COVID. And we were teasing him a little bit saying, yeah, like you would, you would have stayed home when you were her age, right? <laughs> and so we were teasing him a little bit. You know, I went anyway, right? <laughs> of course I do, you are his daughter. <laughs> and I only we told them afterwards, I sent them all the pictures. I'm a, I am a photographer in my spare time and I, just kind of dropped all these black and white images like in the middle of all these protests amongst police and with helicopters and he went off. He <laughs> was so unhappy with me <laughs> for doing that. And I was like, dad, I'm, I'm sorry to drop this bomb on you, but I've been to three this week. So <laughs> we'll discuss this at a later stage. But I mean, yeah, across some of the, the cool stuff that I've been doing, Joel and Rosalind, of course, I arrived in New York dead of winter, not a shred of winter clothing, didn't know anyone. And he was like, well, I know someone who can take you to a museum. And Kim, when I started doing some of this other work and CBD and cannabis, and he was like, oh, I know someone I can connect you with. And obviously not being uh, uh, gifted corporately, if that's a word, in the way that uh, my parents are. And I was trying to get a job and he connected me again with Matthew to review and review and revise my resume and we had several meetings in New York and, and I appreciate all of all of the, the love that all of you have poured into into me and into my family um, over the years and especially now. So thank you again. Tom was very special and was very beloved by all of us. And I'm thinking when you were protesting he was unhappy and secretly happy and proud at the same time. I I, I just have to add that uh, exactly what Matthew said, that he was secretly, he was dreading it as a parent. And that was the, the dominant theme of the, that uh, Zoom call, but he was secretly rooting for you and extremely proud that you were, you know, carrying on this really important work. He really believed in, in those, the protests that summer. Um, and I just have to add, Palesa, that um, during my dinner with Tom in January, we were looking at pictures of your prom dress and all the matching outfits. And you were texting dad to ask whether you could get your nails painted and your toenails painted. And I grabbed the phone from him and strongly advocated and said, yes, dad will pay for everything. And then I handed the phone back to Tom and said, with this kind of a dress and these shoes, like she needs all of it, she needs all of it. So you should be glad to, that your daughter is, you know, wants to look as beautiful as she did. And then the true cherry on top was that, uh, that the end of that week when it was your prom, he was sure to send me all the pictures of how gorgeous you were and he was so proud of you. So that was a really special, special time. Awesome. Um, Nancy, do you wanna go ahead and I'll go, I'll put the pictures up as well. All right, I, um, I've practiced this about 500 times and I have only made it through one time, but I, in my life, I have done many of these kinds of things, but not for my own beautiful friend. Um, oh, don't touch me, I'll be done if he touches me. <laughs> so anyway, this is just a blessing from John O'Donohue who himself, um, died at a young age, and I feel like he wrote this for Tom. <clears throat> okay. Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or night or pain can reach you. 
Your love was like the dawn brightening over our lives, awakening beneath the dark, a further adventure of color. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze, quickened in the joy of its being. You place smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart. Your mind always sparkled with wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake, complete. We look toward each other no longer from the old distance of our names. Now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our best refinement. Let us not look for you only in memory where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows, and music echoes eternal tones. <clears throat> when orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. May you continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our mind and where we will never lose you again. Thank you, thank you, Nancy, and thank you everyone for um, for joining us and for keeping Tom and his family and his friends in your heart. Mom, good. Matthew, it's Tom's mom, <laughs> and I just want to thank you very much for putting this all together, and to thank each and every one of you. You are appearing before me as a mosaic, a beautiful mosaic of all the people who touched Tom and were a part of Tom's life in no small way, not at all. Every one of you were very important to him. And I heard about many of you over the years. And I thank you for being a friend of Tom's. And please keep us all in your prayers as we will do the same for you. Thank you again, Matt, and thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Winslow. Um, my mom is unable to communicate with you guys right now, but on behalf of her, I'd just like to say thank you again. And she appreciates all of the love and the effort that you guys put to, to come together and share these wonderful stories with us. Matthew, if you would please share this recording and all of the images, we really appreciate that. And we would love to circulate uh, far and wide all the awesome stories you guys have shared with us today. Thank you. You're in our hearts.